Hello and welcome to Emerald's Table. Today we're going all out and celebrating in style because our dishes are kicked up, dressed up, and ready to impress. On our menu, a classic rich lobster thermidor, and then it's time for a mountain of cold, sweet goodness because it's baked Alaska. And to really get this party started, we're serving champagne punch. So let's celebrate in style. Come join me at my table. You know, if you're hosting a party for a special occasion, you'll want to serve today's menu. And joining me at my table are some very, very fashionable guests. Say hello to Michelle, Rebecca, Jimmy, Carol, and Wendy. Welcome, guys. Hi, All of you in the fashion business? All of us. Here yeah. in the city? Philadelphia. Ah. So what's it like? Is it a big difference between Philadelphia and New York or L.A.? It's a big difference. It's a lot more, there's a lot more going on in New York. But Philadelphia's right, we're, we're trying. That's awesome. New York based? No, Philadelphia as Philadelphia well. Philadelphia based as well. Mm -hmm. I'm New York. New York. Yes. New York. New York. Okay, I love New York. It's a song. <laughs> okay. Do you guys entertain a lot? Yes. Yeah. Or are you all too busy? Probably. I know you're very busy. There are those weeks that you have. Yes. It's like everywhere. Fashion week. Yeah. Right. You don't have a life. No. But then you entertain? Yes. Have you ever had mm -hmm. lobster thermidor? No. 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 Oh, classic. How about baked Alaska? Yes. Yeah. You haven't. No, I, I haven't have either. All right, well, you're in for a treat. Very excited. Speaking about treats, here's what we're going to do. I have a little canapé here of some prosciutto, mm -hmm. and it has fontina cheese melted on the little crostini. Yeah. So good. I'm going to offer you one. Thank you. Mm, thank you. You're so welcome. It's drizzled with a little olive oil. Thank you. And it's a yummy little thank snack. You, you know why? Because what we're going to begin with is something to drink with it. Great. So, nice. we're gonna make a champagne punch. Two bottles of champagne. Oh, yeah, babe. Two bottles, that's it? Two bottles, that's it. <laughs> I think it's a good way to start. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is my glass. Yours is coming right <laughs> up. Can you substitute Prosecco for champagne? I love Prosecco. Okay. So the difference between champagne and Prosecco, or sparkling wine, is that it has to come from the region of Champagne in France, okay. whereas Prosecco was very, very friendly in Italy. Yeah. Love Prosecco. Little sugar, as sweet as you want it. And then we're gonna add some fresh lemon juice, some fresh orange juice. Oh yeah, babe. Now, Little triple sec, maybe? Hmm? Oh, good. Sound good? How much exactly? Oh, about that much. <laughs> <laughs> now, you a fan of Grand Marnier? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Yes, I, I am too. <laughs> uh, so a little Grand Marnier. <laughs> and then we have a little cognac. Mm. Cognac and champagne. Boo hoo. Very good. Yes, there's a party. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to happen right now. You can't even smell it. <laughs> Jimmy, how about giving me a hand? Sure. Come on up, bud. So now I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add now a orange. And then we're gonna add lemon. And how about if you add strawberry? Perfect, I can use my hands? Sure. Okay. Know why? Yeah. So much booze in here, it's gonna kill it anyhow. <laughs> there we go. Nice. There we go. So what we're gonna do is come over here. No, you think we should go more than that? Yes. <laughs> Fill her up. Not? Fill her up. Why not, right? Well, that's yours at least. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna fill this up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, right after this, we're gonna start with making lobster thermidor. Nice. Which I'm very excited about. You know, when you have big ice cubes like this, mm -hmm. it chills it so fast. And it doesn't really dilute it, right? No, and you can make uh, your own mold at home. Okay. All right, so look, I'm gonna let you help me serve. Perfect. 
stuff. Great. So I'll let you go with that tray. All right. And you can pass them out, and then we'll have a little toast. Perfect. Thanks, Jimmy. Ladies. Thanks, Jimmy. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Nice. Thank you. Don't be giving many side tips, ladies. Come on. <laughs> Perfect. I'll put mine right there. Excellent. Thanks, friend. You know, lobster thermidor, mushrooms that we're going to slice like such. And I also have carrot, celery, and onions, the maripois. But lobster has a firm, sweet, delicate flesh. I mean, look at the lobster. It comes with two claws. After you have them steamed, you can have your fishmonger do that as well. So basically what we're gonna do is take the meat, we have knuckle meat, we have claw meat, and then we have the tail meat. Take it out of the shell, tail, claw, knuckle. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a little butter in here. Chef, is it true that the older the lobster it is, the bigger it gets, and then the tendency to be less sweet? Because yes. Because overworked muscles. So the true. Same? It's the same. You know, those guys are just on the, on, you know, they're on the bottom of the, of, the, of the ocean. And so they're basically just roaming. Right. And it's very, very true what you just said. The older, the bigger, but I don't necessarily think that they're, that means tender. Okay. Like people think that because, well, I'm going to order the biggest lobster in the tank, right. that that's going, to be, that's going to be the real treat. That's usually what I want to do. I'm like, oh, I want the big one. Right. <laughs> Bring me out the big monster. Yeah. How old is he? 48 <laughs> years old. Oh, great. Exactly. So now we're going to have some salt and pepper. We're going to saute this. When we come back, I'll show you exactly what lobster thermidor really looks like. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Cheers. Oh, welcome back, folks. How you doing? Emerald's Table here, celebrating in style. Got my fashion friends here. Uh, do you know that the largest lobster, according to the Guinness Book of World Records, we were talking about the size of lobsters, off the Nova Scotia coast, was 44 pounds, 6 ounces. Wow. Can you imagine that? That's like almost the size of a whale, I would think. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Anyhow, all right. So we added a little brandy to our... Maripois is what it's called. Carrot, celery, onions. Maripois. Isn't that a nice name? Mm, yeah. I'm going to buy a new puppy. Call it Maripois. <laughs> I love that. And, of course, our little mushrooms. Now, over here, we're going to start the sauce. So I've got butter that I've melted, and I'm going to do equal parts of flour to make a roux. Oh, that looks lovely. Chef, is maripois uh, a French word? It seems like a lot it of It is a French word, and it, but it's universal. Okay. In all cooking now, whether you are cooking in Australia, in Asia, uh, here in New York, or Philadelphia, or if you cook uh, in France, a maripois is carrot, celery, and onions. Everyone it's knows. universal in cooking. So what we're going to do now is listen to this. We're adding a few lobster shells to the roux. I've mm. taken the water from the lobster when we boiled them, Okay. and reduced it down. So I've got this intense lobster flavor in here now. Nice. And then what we're going to do is add a little paprika, which is going to give it color. Is it because the lobster shells have still have a lot of flavor in there? Yes. But once you poach it or Yeah, but it, you see, it when you shuck it, it's, you get all the fat inside of it. Mm. So now we're going to add a little bit of brandy or cognac to this. Oh, yeah. This is a happy show. <laughs> and then we're going to have a little bit of milk and cream. All right, so now. I'm this punch is delicious, by the way. Isn't it great? It's awesome. Yeah. So now what we're going to do is just sort of bring this up. And we've got some nice color in here now. And let's see when it comes up to a boil. Now, what we're going to do is I have these amazing ramekins right here. And what we're going to do is put some of the maripois and mushroom mixture right in the bottom. Now, Chef, I have a question about the lobster. Mm -hmm. um, I hear that the male and female, there's a difference, that the female's a bit sweeter and a lot less, not as tough as the male. Is that true? Well, rumor has it. <laughs> That's what they say. Okay. I don't argue. <laughs> now, we could have deglazed with a little bit of wine. But 
going to check on our sauce real quick. This is looking great, guys. By the way, we're going to have a little white pepper in there. Then we'll taste it for salt. Yummy. A little salt in here now. What kind of salt do you use in that? Is it sea salt. salt? Sea salt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take now one claw. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to take. And why aren't you chopping it up? Because I like the surprise. <laughs> I'm going to take a half of the tail. That's been cut. See that? Doesn't that look great? Mm -hmm. Guess what? You guys are going to get to eat this, you know. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that nice? So, Chef, did you um, poach this or did you? Yes. What did you do? You poached it? Brought the water up and uh, nice simmer water, lemon, tarragon, peppercorns. Mm -hmm. okay. You can flavor it any way you want. You can make it spicy if you want. Okay. So, look at all this meat. I love seafood, but I'm really scared of I've never cooked um, lobster. I'm just scared of it. And, and You know what? There's a lot of the seafood markets will actually cook it for you. Okay. Aww. And you just have, have them steam it for you. It'll be, it's perfect. I'm going to turn the oven on really, really high. Okay. When you say broil, turn it to broil. Mm -hmm. People freak out as soon as you say broil. It's the hottest part of the oven, and it's the direct part of the heat on the top. So if that freaks you out, there's no problem. But you know what? It's all about taste. Mm -hmm. you, you, you have to taste this because I don't want to use you guys as guinea pigs. Mm -hmm. So oh, we don't mind. We're going to add a little bit more brandy and we we're going to add more salt and we're definitely going to add some tarragon. Guys with me over there? Yes. Yeah. Now, when you're when you're entertaining and you have guests over for a party, yep. how many pounds do you plan per person of lobster? Yep. Well, if you buy basically a one and a half pound lobster, okay, you're basically getting about forty percent of it is going to be the meat. Mm. Okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to pour the sauce on it. Wow. That we're going to top great. it with Parmesan cheese. Delicious. And then, ooh, that one got a nice shot of tarragon. <laughs> <laughs> and then. When we come back, I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like. And then, oh, wait till you see this show-stopping dessert. It's Baked Alaska. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Doesn't that look great, guys? Delicious. Amazing. Well, well, welcome back, folks. Ooh, ouch. That was a hot one. All right, people. Here we go. Wow, looks great. Does that look awesome or what, huh? Woo, woo. All right. Here we go. The real deal. Now, Chef, how long was that in the oven again? Like six, maybe six minutes. That's right. So we had the hot sauce. We're just trying to get that cheese. See how it sort of gratinade like that? I love that word, gratinade. Another puppy name. Broil or, or high degree? High. Okay. Because you want to, you see how it sort of singed a little bit like that? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, dig in, see what you think. Oh, thank you. So, you have punch, I have wine. What kind of wine? Wine that I cook with. But I wouldn't cook with any wine that I wouldn't drink. So, all right, look, we're making a meringue. And what we're looking for right here is this to get up to about 250 degrees. Because we're not just making any meringue. All right, so now you take egg whites. You get them really going to stiff peaks. Okay. How is it? It's delicious. Yeah. It's unbelievable. And then we're going to pour this slowly to make an Italian meringue. What's the difference between an Italian meringue and a normal meringue? Just what we just did. Like you make a meringue, most meringues you're gonna use straight, just straight sugar. Mm -hmm. We're using a sugar that's been dissolved, like a syrup, mm -hmm. and that's what we're doing in here because it's gonna get really, where do you see how this is gonna get really stiff like marshmallow? You see the steam coming out of that? All right, now, we have that done. And that's not cooking the egg? No, 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 no. It's nice, beautiful, see? Really light, fluffy. Look at that. 
Chef, do you have any tips on making the meringue? It's something I've really had a hard time with. Probably have a dirty bowl. Oh, interesting. If you don't, every time I make meringue, I wash my bowl out with hot, hot water, then I really, really dry it with a cloth so that there's no streaks or any of that. Sometimes I even use a little bit of vinegar, which oh, helps it crawl okay. up the bowl. Okay. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna layer of cake. We have the meringue made. We're gonna brush this with a simple syrup that's been fused with a little bit of brandy. What is simple syrup? Sugar and water. Okay. I love stretching like this. Now, <laughs> what we're gonna do is we start the bottom, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna, now we're gonna use a blade, an ice cream blade, and we're gonna blade some ice cream in here. What flavors are you using? I'm using that? vanilla, a French vanilla, so it has vanilla bean in it. Okay. And I'm gonna use chocolate. Now, where does um, baked Alaska come from? You know, another celebration dessert when it was made. Okay. And it originated, actually, the first one was in France. And they used to have these things called ice cream bombs. You ever hear that? Yes. And that's really where the idea came from. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push this ice cream, okay? And we're gonna create now we're gonna create a top layer of this. So what we're gonna do is take the top layer and layer it right on top. Make sure our paper's out of the way so that way it's gonna help us get out. We're gonna push this down now and flatten the ice cream. Then we're gonna brush it with syrup and this goes in the freezer. Hmm, so it's like an ice cream sandwich. Yep, right? but it's now it goes in the freezer and it gets really rock hard. You can do this Wrap it with plastic, you can do it days in advance. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, so now, this goes in the freezer. When you're ready to do the meringue, you need a bag, you need a star tip if you have one, you're gonna unmold it, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start decorating it now with the meringue in the bag. Mm -hmm. So here's the paper. Chef, you're using, uh, right now you used vanilla and chocolate ice cream. Could you change up the uh, flavors of ice cream and do... It's really whatever you like. Okay. Yep, it could be, I mean, I've done them with pistachio, I've done them with strawberry and vanilla. Wow. Basically now, what you wanna be sure though is to make sure you take this paper off. Okay. Because then, can you imagine that? You take a first bite and it's like, <laughs> oh, ruin the moment. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna decorate the sides. And this is Italian meringue, you This said, is correct? Italian meringue. Okay. And can you use any other uh, kind of meringues? Or do you... Well, you could use, you know, there's also a Swiss meringue, okay. which is also a syrup. It just gives it a little bit more strength, which is what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna keep decorating this. And then when we come back, we're gonna finish our celebration. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Doesn't that look good already? Yes. Delicious. So welcome back, folks. We're getting ready to uh, light our flame for our baked Alaska. Great question. Want to clarify, because I didn't answer you. Okay. But now Robin, the famous Robin, we have a little factoid, because I know a little bit about this. The baked Alaska was coined at Delmonico's restaurant in 1876. Wow. And it was to honor the acquired American territory, Alaska. Wow. Very nice. Very yeah. You see that? Yeah. Now, we're going to just do a little torch here. I told you I was going to show you some new tricks. Chef, what if you don't have a blowtorch at Well, home? you know, they sell them. <laughs> if you don't have a blowtorch, you call it an albino baked Alaska. <laughs> All right, now for the final, the final touch. We put an eggshell right inside there. And then you take a little bit of, uh, you know, nice whatever you like. See, and how you serve it is you just... Oh, wow. oh and it, it lights up really nice. Got a nice singe, nice torch. Then the best part of the whole is to take a hot knife and then we take a piece just like this Oh, look at this, guys. Uh, I'm coming back. Oh, wow. I'm coming. Here I come. <laughs> oh, look at that. Um, look nice. at that. Wow. Oh, look at that. 
See, it's still really, really frozen. And the cake is like a brownie. So there you have it, folks. Some very dressed up classic dishes to serve for your next celebration. But remember, folks, food is meant to be shared, especially with friends like you. See you next time. All right, guys, here we go. Who's first? I'm first. Okay. <laughs> he wanted all the meringue. That's that. Uh, I got it. I got it now.